Hey and welcome! Today we will solve palindrome number interview questions. So let's get into it. Here we have the first example. We get number 121 one, and if we reverse it, it will give us the same number. So we return true here. Second example. We have again number 121 one, but it's negative 121 one, and because of that negative sign we might return false. Because if we reverse it, it will be at the end of it. And the hint is, as it seems, we might return false for any negative number. And last example here. We get number 10 and obviously based on what we saw, it is not a palindrome. If we reverse it, it goes from two digits to one. Let's see how we are going to solve this problem. So as usual, the brute force way is here. We are not interested in. But as a base solution, there's a mathematical way for solving this problem. The idea here is that we can pop digits one by one from right side and by help of mass, we can build up it in reverse order. To pop digits, we can use Majolus operator by 10 because that will give us the remainder of number after dividing it by 10. So this will be our popped value. Next, we need to update the number itself, right? Because we just popped the most right digit from it. For that, we can use mass.floor on the number that we will divide it by 10. So in case of 121 we will have 12.1 which will run to 12 the first two digit in that case now we will reassign it back to the original number and as a last step for us we have the rightmost digit in our hand called pop here so starting from zero we can have a coefficient of 10 in order to build up the reversed version of the number and add off whatever popped value we have into it in other words it will give us this result and there we go we just found our first digit a super simple formula to build the hundreds tens and ones in this case and for other cases until until the actual length of our number. So this process will repeat one more time for next digit. Again, we will pop a digit from right side, update the actual number by removing the popped digit, and finally update the reverse number so far. And one last time, just like that, until we run out of digits in the first place and reach into number zero. That should be a breaking point for us, which will be translated into a simple while loop that I'll show you in the code. But now look at our result variable. We have the reverse number in our hand and we can easily compare it with the original number to see if they are same or in other words to see if they are palindrome. Let's jump into the code to implement this solution. First step for us is to check if a number is negative because if so we might directly return false. Then next thing is to keep a reference to the original number because we will update x as we go through the algorithm. Next up, we'll be defining some variables like our pop for rightmost digit and result variable, which will be initially zero. Now, as I showed in the slides, we will do some operations on the given value until that value becomes zero. Here's the list of actions we need to do. First is to pop the rightmost digit from number by using Majolus operator. Second step is to update the original value because we just popped the last digit out of it. Then the last step was to reassign the result value with the same formula that we explore. This will shape our reverse number digit by digit. At the end, all that's left now is to just compare the reverted result with the original number that we kept the reference for to see if they are palindrome. Now if I run this, tests are passing and if I submit, we are in a good shape here. Okay, that was first solution, but we can do better. The only pitfall with previous solution was that we were checking all the digits of given number, but palindrome means something else than checking all the digits. And by that meaning, we only need to check just half of the given number, because if we reach to the middle digit and see some mismatches, we know that it is not palindrome. Then why iterate over all digits? So in the process of reversing the number, how we should know if we reverse until the half of given number? It is so simple. We can check if the original number gets less than the reverted number during our iteration. Because let's think what would that mean for us since we are trimming the original value in every iteration, if our reverted number starts to get bigger than original value, that would be a hint for us that we have surpassed the middle value. And in fact, that should be the termination condition for our while loop. So the key take here is that, again, comparing the reverted number with what is left from original number. But how we are going to compare values? Even length numbers are pretty much obvious what to do with. We just need to compare them with what is left from original values since they will have exactly the same length digits to compare. But for odd length numbers like this one here, when we reach into the middle value, we will have a scenario like 12 for original number and 1 to 3 for reverted number. And they will clearly not match, so in that case we might skip the last digit from reverted number since that number will stand lonely in between those two parts. So what matters for us are only 
between these two parts and that is what we need to compare to check for being palindrome or not. There's one edge case that we need to go through it though. Let's say we get a number like 100 or any other number that ends with 0. We know that if we reverse it, the last zeros will be at the beginning of the reverse numbers. So it cannot be a valid case to even compare it with original number because the leading zeros does not have any value, any importance to the end result reverse number. The only case that would be happy with that scenario will be number 0 only because it doesn't have anything to the left or right of it. So we will keep that in mind while writing the solution. Now let's jump into the code for implementing this solution. Here we are in lead code. For optimized solution, we will pretty much do the same things, but with minor differences. So here we have the same solution with us. First, we need to take care of our edge case, the numbers that end with zero. And as we said, if we reverse them, they could not have a leading zero. So it is redundant to try to check if they are palindrome or not. Plus, the only number that would satisfy as palindrome under that circumstances is number zero. So we will cover those edge cases in the first if case that we have here. Then we don't need the original number in this solution because we will check the reversed half with whatever has left from the original number. So we can remove this. Then the other change we need to do is in the while loop condition. We might check if the original number is larger than the reverse number and only if so do whatever we have within the while loop. Because at any case if reverse number goes larger than original one we know that we have passed the midpoint. And finally, after this while loop, it's time to compare what is left from original number with what we have as result. As we said, we will treat even and odd results differently. Even numbers are pretty much easy. It is just a simple comparison. But for odd numbers, we might skip the last digit because that will be the midpoint. So we will do a master floor on it. That should be it. Now, if I run this, test cases are passing and if I submit, we are in a good shape here. Now let's jump into slides to explore time and space complexity. The time complexity will be O of log n based on 10 for both solutions because we divide the given number to 10 in each iteration we go through. And the space complexity will be O of 1 for both as well because, because all we did was just playing around with some variables. So that was it for this video. Thanks for watching and please leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. I will put a few more links about different playlists in the description for you to check it out. And finally, hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.